Uh, hi, this is Andrew Davy, Nevada Forward, and we're here with uh, Rafael Lopez. Thanks for joining us. Um, uh, first off, um, you know, um, we've been hearing in the news that the Trump administration is considering putting an end to the DACA program. Could happen any day now. Um, you know, what are you thinking? How are you preparing for this? Uh, for myself, I just sort of accepted that there's a very high chance that they are going to take DACA away from us. So I'm just thinking about like, okay, how do we move forward, you know, after the uh, DACA? And I'm just kind of looking back into like what my life was back before DACA. What could I do to, you know, continue to thrive and survive? But at the same time, what sort of actions I can take mm -hmm. to uh, push Congress to actually address the issue of uh, dreamers who are now going to have no protection from being deported, who will not have uh, work permits to continue to work leaving this country. So for me, it's just it's just a lot of thinking, like how am I going to, you know, uh, hopefully have the public react. Okay. get Congress to move to do uh, something. Um, how was your life before before DACA and, and you know what motivated you to advocate not just for yourself but for other immigrants in Nevada? Uh, well before DACA I was just uh, as a college student I didn't have uh, luck getting uh, jobs where I actually could make a decent income uh, for myself. I didn't have the authority you know, to, to drive. Yeah. I couldn't, you know, buy a car. I couldn't get credit. Uh, it was definitely tough. Um, however, uh, for me, as a person, as an immigrant who actually got an order of deportation when I was 15 years old due to a attorney who actually scammed my family, uh, I felt like I had nothing to lose and I had to do something to fight back. Not just so that I can improve my life, but the life of others. And that's basically what just led me to, you know, get involved and, you know, I met a couple other individuals in, here in Nevada who were in the same situation as myself. So we started uh, organizing, taking action, finding ways to just try to get uh, our representatives to support the DREAM Act, which was uh, back in 2010. And uh, we, we had heard about this, you know, DREAM Act coming up and that was just kind of like, well, maybe this is a way out of our problem. Maybe this is what mm -hmm. could improve our lives. This maybe could, what could fix things for us. Um, and so that's kind of what led me to get involved. Um, how do you think we've progressed in the past, um, you know, in the past seven years? Do you think, um, particularly here in Southern Nevada, that you know we're a more immigrant-friendly community now than we were back then? Um, I think overall, yes. I would say I think. I think uh, Southern Nevada feels a little more immigrant friendly than it was before because back in um, what, about seven years ago it was a different, uh, there was a different aura they could mm -hmm. feel from the community on their attitude towards immigrants in general. Yeah. But I think today we have progressed overall and um, I'd say there's a, there's a, dec there's a, a decent friendly atmosphere towards us. Yeah. Yet still there is this climate of fear, especially since Donald Trump has taken office and since he's you know, been making these threats to the immigrant community leading up to what might happen any day now with DACA. You know, what's your advice to other immigrants out there who are afraid, who are afraid to live their lives? The thing is, like, this is what, you know, that uh, the Trump administration wants. They want us to, you know, cave in, go back into uh, into the shadows, live in fear. That's exactly what they want because they don't want us to fight back. And we can't give up on uh, pushing forward uh, for a solution uh, for the millions of undocumented people living in this country. Uh, we still have to continue to, you know, share stories, uh, be vocal about, you know, our situation. We have to let people know that we exist. Uh, and honestly, that's like by caving in and going back to the shadows, that we're, we're just being silent and in some way complacent with like the situation. Mm -hmm. we're, we, are, we are basically waving a white flag. Yeah. And that's what we can't do. We just have to continue to be vocal, share our stories, continue to pressure our representatives to do something about yeah. uh, immigration. 
And finally, on that note, you know, what's your ad advice for our members of Congress, um, you know, including Senators Heller and Cortez Masto? Um, you know, we've seen what at least two bills um, be introduced, the Bridge Act and now a new version of the DREAM Act. But, you know, we don't know when or if ever um, the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell will allow a vote on these bills. I think overall, um, what I would say is overall Nevada supports, you know, pathway for uh, citizenship uh, for immigrants and especially for, there's a high support for dreamers, uh, which is why um, our senators should support the DREAM Act. Uh, and they need to remember that we came, that thousands of Nevadans came out of the shadows, turned their information in. Uh, allow their themselves to be, you know, known by the government that we are here in this country, mm -hmm. and uh, many people's lives are about to drastically change again. Yeah. We bought cars, we have houses, we have careers, and all thanks to God, DACA. DACA has changed the lives of thousands of Nevadans who are documented uh, in this state, and we contribute every day. Uh, we contribute to our communities. Uh, whether it's you know through taxes, whether it's you know uh, helping other fellow advance, but we're here. We're part of this community.